Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at the relative valuation method for attempting to calculate the fair value of stocks. As with any valuation method, we need to remember that this is an approximation. We're not going to get exact answers. Instead, it's a way to get a rough guideline of about where the stock price should be. And in another video, we'll talk about some of the problems in applying this. But this video, we're just going to go through the calculation approach. So here we're using the price earnings multiple, the price to book multiple, and the enterprise value to EBITDA multiple in order to attempt to calculate the value of the firm. You could also use price to sales or price to cash flows. There's a number of different multiples that you can use to attempt to come up with a fair value. I've chosen these three as an example. We've got four years of historical data for our firm and our industry, which we're going to use to provide some historical context and comparative context for what the appropriate multiple should be. We've also got some data here about our forecasted earnings per share, book value, EBITDA, and things we're going to use for those calculations. So let's start up here. One of the things we need to do to get started is figure out what the average has been over the time period we're looking at. Typically about three to six years is an appropriate time frame to look at. If you go back too far, you're probably going to have not very meaningful data. If you don't have enough data, it's also not going to be very meaningful. So here I've grabbed four years to get an average of what our values, our multiples should be. So if we look, our PE has been 24.5 in 2015, 26.8 in 2016, 29.3 in 2017, and 32.6 in 2018. So we're going to take an average of those. And to do that, you can use a formula in Excel or a formula in Word to just calculate an average. You can see here's the little formula bar. We just need to set this to average, and that tells us the, the average for these four separate multiples is 28.3. I've already filled those in for the rest of that table. So now we're going to use the historical measures to calculate what the appropriate book value or the appropriate stock price should be. Just make some quick changes to the font size here. So for PE, we know our average is 28.3. So we're going to assume that's a fair multiple for our stock price. And our earnings per share is $3.20. So we just multiply those together. And we're going to get a value of $90.56. Next, we go to the price book multiple. The multiple for our firm on average has been 3.75. Our forecasted book value is $22.75. So we multiply those together. and we get a price of 85.31. Lastly, we've got our enterprise value to EBITDA. Now we do have to be careful here. We're calculating the enterprise value, not the stock price. So we're gonna have to make an adjustment. Enterprise value is equal to the value of the stock plus value of the debt plus value of preferred and minority interests minus cash and cash equivalents. So when we solve for stock, which is what we're trying to find, what is the fair value for our stock price? We have the stock is equal to the enterprise value less the debt, less the preferred 
seniority plus cash and cash equivalents. So at first, we're going to solve for enterprise value. Once we get that, we're going to need to adjust that to get back to our stock price. So our enterprise value to EBITDA multiple is 11.3. And our forecasted EBITDA per share is $8.50. And which gives us a value of $96.05. However, that is the enterprise value. So now we have to take out our debt per share, which is $6. You can see that up here. take out our preferred stock and minority interest, which is zero in this example, and then add back in our cash and cash equivalent per share, and that is $5. So that gives us a stock price of $95.05. Now that's just looking at our firm, but we also might want to consider, well, let's look at where we stand relative to the industry. It's another way to provide context and figure out what our level should be. And so this is referred to as a comparative approach. And one of the additional pieces of information we're going to need here is what is the current level for the industry. So I'm going to add some more data here. Current PE for the industry. We're going to say that is 22. Current price book for the industry. We're going to say that is 4.5. And current EV to EBITDA for the industry, we're going to say is currently 12.1. So now we're going to go back to our calculations for the PE approach. Our firm has had an average of 28.3 relative to the industry average of 20.85, which means the market has given us a premium. It values our earnings a little bit higher than it does the average firm in the industry. So we're going to assume that premium exists today and is at the same level. So we're going to start by capturing that premium, 28.3 divided by 20.85. And then we're going to multiply that by the current PE multiple for the industry, which is 22. And then we're going to multiply that by our forecasted earnings per share, which is $3.20. When we do that, just give me a second to go through the calculations here. That gives us a value of $95.55. Now we do the same thing for the price to book. Our price to book multiple has been 3.75 as a historical average. The industry has been 4.25, so we've traded at a slight discount relative to the industry on a price to book multiple. We want to capture that discount. multiplied by the current price to book for the industry, which is 4.5. And then multiply by our forecasted book value per share, which is $22.75. So again, give me a second to do those calculations.
and that gives us a value of ninety dollars and thirty three cents lastly we have our enterprise value to EBITDA model so again we're going to use our value relative to the industry so again we're trading at a discount here to the industry so we're going to capture that 11.3 divided by 13 multiply by the current multiple for the industry which is 12.1 and then multiply by our forecasted EBITDA per share which is eight dollars and fifty cents one more time let me do the calculations here And that gives us a value of $89.40. But again, remember, this is not the stock price. This is the enterprise value per share. So to get that back, I need to subtract out debt, subtract out the value of preferred and minority interest, and add back cash and cash equivalents. So I need to subtract out the value of debt subtract out the value of preferred and minority interest add back in cash and that's going to give me a value of eighty eight dollars and forty cents so based on my calculations here I would say that the value of this company is probably somewhere between eighty five dollars and thirty one cents I'm just going to round that to eighty five dollars and the highest price that we've got here is ninety five dollars and fifty five cents I'm going to round that to 96 and say that the value of our firm based on this relative valuation analysis is probably somewhere in the ballpark of $85 to 96 cents. That goes through the calculations. Again, I'm going to put together another video that will walk through some of the complications that we have to think about in applying this in real world settings. Thank you.